read from the independent state of the Vatican. It is about 10 a.m., 10.30, and we've already been out touring for three hours. This morning at about 5.30 to catch a pre-opening Vatican tour. So we got time in the Sistine Chapel this morning with about, I don't know, a hundred other people or so. So we beat the crowd. It was well worth the money spent to have that, a quieter time in the museum and in the Sistine Chapel. And then we were able to sneak through um, a group store in the Sistine Chapel to uh, skip the line in St. Peter's Basilica, which is now completely wrapped around the square, maybe twice. Looking over the camera, it's probably, I would say, two, two and a half hours long at this point. So we did well to get up early, lose a little sleep, and beat the rush. Yeah, it's not a typical vacation thing to get up at 5.30 in the morning to get over here by 7. And we're not usually big group tour people unless food is involved, but it was a very quick tour. They rushed us through the museum to get to the Sistine Chapel so we'd have time in there to really take in some of Michelangelo's work and from what I understand later in the day you can barely move and barely look up at the Sistine Chapel. We've just been resting here in the square, resting our feet a little bit. I think we're gonna go find a late breakfast and maybe head down to a neighborhood called Testaccio for some lunch and to check out a church called St. Paul's Outside the Wall which is where St. Paul, the Apostle Paul, is supposedly buried. So we're super hungry, we haven't had anything since about 6 a.m. We're ready to go. Let's do it. They give out free Coke some places. I like free Coke. This is the second free Coke we've had. I hope they give out more free Coke. from the tourist bustle and made it to the neighborhood of Testaccio, which is south of the city and a little bit off the beaten path. We're at the Testaccio Market, which itself is off the beaten path. You can find all sorts of meat, cheeses, locals buying fresh produce, and you can find some food items that you can purchase to eat right now that are more traditional, like the cow stomach. I definitely think it's broccoli, but it's delicious. here in the market, we have three types. The first is anchovy, zucchini flour, and stracciatella, which sounds like chocolate chip ice cream, but we found out last night. It is actually like, if you get a burrata, like a mozzarella cheese with ricotta inside, it's the creamy cheese on the inside of a burrata. Second is radicchio and gorgonzola cheese, and it looks like maybe walnuts. And the third is, I believe just tomato or sun-dried tomato and cheese. So, this was my choice, the zucchini flour, so I'm going to give it a shot first. It's a piece of the cheese. The other has none. You're going to need to like fish. Not bad, but different. We stayed pretty normal with our food choices at the Testaccio Market, but it's not a bad price, and if you're into trying different foods, it's a great place to check it out. So I think we've got several different pizzas for about 
six euros and then a sandwich for like four or five euros and there's just a lot of options to try now once you buy the food several of the stalls have their own seating but there's a big open area that you can take any of your food and drinks and eat it there as well with what appear to be a lot of locals now that we're in Testaccio, we're gonna go check out another church that doesn't get as much attention as St. Peter's in the Vatican. It's called St. Paul's Outside the Walls and supposedly is the home of St. Paul's remains. So we just finished walking through St. Paul's Outside the Walls, which at one time was one of the largest Christian churches. It was built just before Rome fell and was really an important church from the start. Compared to St. Peter's, there's no one here, so it was just a really great stop, kind of an intimate moment in a very big building that has great significance in the Catholic Church. It's off the beaten path, but I definitely recommend catching a bus or a train south of the city to come check this place out. Yeah, the church was originally built in 380 AD, but it burned in a fire in the 1800s, so it was completely rebuilt. There are a few things that survived the fire, which are really interesting to see, like mosaics and some pieces that hang over what is supposedly St. Paul's remains. The Catholic Church, I believe, has had the bones dated that they found, and they are from like the first or second century, so they are very old bones that would match the time period. I think we're gonna head back towards the city center and hit the Colosseum when it's a little less crowded. I now have an hour to tour the Colosseum, which we've toured before, but we wanted to see it one more time with a guided tour book from Mr. Rick Steves. And so we ran over here, the last entry is one hour before closing, which is seven minutes from now. One hour before closing is seven minutes from now. So we used our Roma passes to use the group entrance, which had no line because it closes in an hour. And we walked right in. about 40 minutes or so and I think that we've seen most of it. The Colosseum is an amazing building but there's not an incredible amount of things left inside. I wouldn't suggest coming here with just over an hour and having to run to the gate but there are very few people here. You can take all the selfies you want, you can walk around in peace. So I'd say probably coming after about 3 or 4 o'clock it's cooler which is great in Rome and you won't have to fight the crowds. Uh, it looks like it's going to unload from the sky on us so I think we'll probably call this experience done and get the camera back to a safe place and get ourselves ready for dinner. We beat the downpour after running from the policy and back to our apartment. Good thing our apartment is like two minutes away. And now we are waiting on the tram number three, to take a ride over to Trastevere, which is where our food tour was last night, to try to find a little bit of dinner. Uh, so, Trastevere? Sorry, oh. it's a little bit of a precarious tram stop here as we're kind of on a median between two pretty busy uh, lanes of traffic. So yeah, head on a swivel. <laughs> it appears to be rush hour traffic at 8.16 at night, but Trastevere had a lot of restaurants and nightlife and action going on last night. It looked like a really cool place to go and try to find some uh, carbonara pasta. 
yeah, so hopefully once again we can beat the rain and stay dry and find some gelato after dinner. We've heard some good things about a place we haven't tried yet, so that's on the agenda as well. And hopefully we can make it to just a break without getting hit by a car. Yeah. we don't go the route of three to four courses like most Italians do. And we beat the rush by getting here at 8.30. It's now 9.40 and this place is packed and people keep pouring in the door right now. We just finished dinner. Yeah, the carbonara tonight was especially delicious. We also had some spaghetti with clams, some bruschetta, and caprese salad. I'm just constantly amazed at how simple ingredients like olive oil, bread, tomatoes, salt, and maybe a little garlic can make something so amazing. Now we're waiting on a bus to go out of our way. Police car just drove by. Go out of our way to try a gelato shop that we've heard is great. So hopefully the bus shows up in the next few minutes. I would like to say it is now 10.40 at night and we are over just across the river from Just Every, which is bustling for 10.40 on a Thursday. There are people out with their babies, their toddlers, everyone has a dog here. The traffic behind us is not calm, as you can probably hear. But yeah, hopefully this bus shows up in the next few minutes and we can go test out another gelato shop. Chocolate in the cones, liquid chocolate, and I have pistachio, fior di latte, and crema del 1947, whatever that is, and some whipped cream on top. Super tasty. Uh, this could be a winner. I don't know. It's really good. Whipped cream, panna cream is a thing here in Rome, and it's usually included for free. And this is incredible because the cone again is filled with chocolate as well. Maybe worth worth the uh, 25 minute bus ride over here. We just got back to our apartment near the Coliseum. It is about midnight or so. We were hopping the metro back and were some of the last people let onto a train before they actually shut the station down. And we learned that it actually closes at 11.30 and we were coming through to like 11.35 or so. Yeah, I think the buses still run later than 11.30, but the tram and metros shut down between 11.30 and midnight. So yeah, if you're in Rome, keep that in mind. This pretty much closes out our second to last full day. We haven't really decided what we're going to be doing tomorrow. We've been running since about 5.30 this morning to get to everything we wanted to do and we ran it pretty hard again yesterday and my Fitbit's saying that we walked uh, about 12 miles or so today even though we took mass transit for quite a bit of it. So I think we're gonna try to take things easier if that's possible for us. Yeah, we'll probably sleep in just a little bit but we we'll wanna take full advantage of our last full day so we may take a day trip or we may find some things to do around the city here. So we're gonna head to bed. Good night.